Hey, fifth grade geniuses. I hope you're doing good today. I hope you went to bed at a good time last night. Um, I heard from Riley, uh, Miley something really clever. She's setting goals of bedtime and wake up time to help her feel like she's in a regular routine. That's a really dope idea, Miley. Keep that up. Um, I hope you guys are wiggling your bodies. I hope you're helping your families and your siblings. And I want you to reach out to me if you're bored. Just like if you want to FaceTime or if you want me to send you some educational games and fun activities, I have been looking into a ton of cool stuff that you guys can do to keep your brains active and your bodies active. Um, I want to really suggest that everybody try to move their body today. Maybe challenge yourself to walk up and down the stairs at your house 20 times and see if you can challenge your siblings to do it too. Um, I also want to remind you to take your deep breaths and to maybe even start a journal on a Google document and share it with me. If you do, I will write back to you just to check in and so that you know you're not alone, all right? Uh, today, we are gonna move into our next 15 pages of As Brave As You. Um, on Monday night, Anila really, really commented perfectly that we are in the rising action of this book. So far, we know the introduction and the exposition, right? We know who our main characters are, we know what our setting is, and we're starting to realize what our conflict is. In this rising action stage, which is when the mountain goes up, we're now learning more details about the conflict and being exposed to more of the information about what's happening. Today, my sweet friends, we're gonna start on page 31, and I'm just gonna check my lesson plan. We're gonna read from page 31 to page 44 today, and um, I'm really wondering what's gonna happen. I'm really curious about what their parents are fighting about. Um, I'm curious about why their dad and their grandpa have this strained, strained relationship. Um, and I also just keep looking at the front of our book and I keep wondering about some of the details, right? Um, something that you guys definitely noticed, even without me telling to you, to you, um, I think that Mason even said something to me about this on Friday, is that this book is clearly really good because it's won three big awards that are on the front of it. This award down here, I want to draw your attention to today. So look at it on your book, the big award on the bottom. It's so awkward. Um, this is the Coretta Scott King Award. That award is given out to books that promote peace, brotherhood, and nonviolent social change. So this is a really cool award for a book to win. And typically when I see that a book has won the Coretta Scott King Award, I know that it's gonna be something that I like. Here's the book that sixth grade's reading right now. Notice how they have it as on there as well. Um, because I like books that deal with real stuff that's like real life and that helps us to be smarter and helps us to be more socially involved. All right, get yourself a cup of water, find yourself a comfy sofa, and open up to page 31. I have a hot cup of coffee that I'm going to drink while I read this to you, and let's read and annotate together, okay? We are, let's start, let's start at the top of 31, okay? He took another slurp, swallowed, so spill. Now everyone was staring at Jeannie, except for Ernie, who was too busy trying to pile everything left on his plate onto the last piece of toast. Ma nodded, which meant it was okay for Jeannie to say whatever he wanted to say. Um, he started, nervous. Well, it's just that, Jeannie looked at his mother one more time, just to make sure. She nodded again. It's just that Ma always says you shouldn't wear sunglasses in the house. She says it makes your eyes go bad, plus it makes you look crazy. Her mother dropped her fork. His father snorted. Papa Harris, I'm, she started immediately apologizing, but Grandpa cut her off. Well, he stated, your mom is a smart woman, but for me, it's different. He wiped his mouth with his napkin, then balled it up and dropped it on the table. Want to know why? Why? Jeannie asked. Grandpa leaned in close again. This time enough for Jeannie to get a whiff of the coffee on his breath. 
Because I already can't see a thing, and I've been crazy for years. I forgot to do my southern accent for that page. I'll make sure to do my southern accent again for grandma and grandpa. Page 32, start of chapter 2. I want you to pause the video right now for two minutes, and I want you to write down a prediction in this space on the top of the page of what you think is going to happen next. So, pause. Do it. Okay, I'm hoping that you paused the video and that you wrote your predictions. Let's continue reading, okay? Question number 441. What made Grandpa blind? I bet it was the bright sun that almost blinded me and Ernie this morning. What does blindness feel like? And is it just blackness? Is it like being asleep, but awake, like sleepwalking? Is Grandpa just sleepwalking and sleep talking and sleep eating? And if he's really awake, is he always sleepy? I heard if you put a blanket over a bird's cage and they can't tell it's daytime anymore, they'll just go to sleep. Sorry if you're hearing Mr. Todd talking, he's being very loud right now. Why ain't you tell me he couldn't see? Jeannie asked his mother as his mother zipped closed the little pouch she had kept for toothpaste, toothbrush, and lotion in. He had taken the red truck off the old blue dresser and was sitting on the floor, running his thumb over the wheels. Next to him, of course, was his handy notebook. He had lots of questions, but the most important one he had just asked. Why ain't you tell me he couldn't see? And that was a question he needed to be asked out loud. Your grandpop is a tricky man, baby, Ma began to explain. But then she got hung up and didn't seem to know what else to say. So she looked at Dad. Senior, she groused, snapping Dad out of his trance. Senior was what she called him because his name was Ernie, too. And when she wanted to make sure that whichever Ernie she was yelling at at any given moment would know she was yelling at him and not the other. Yeah, um, yes, Dad stammered, still sort of zoned out. You all right? She asked. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Ma cocked her head to the side. Would you explain to our youngest son why we didn't tell him about Grandpa? Dad looked at Jeannie and sighed. Well... He's kind of a wild guy, Jeannie. Not wild, Jeannie, Ma interrupted. Just, um, interesting. Right, Dad agreed quickly. We weren't trying to keep anything from you. It's just that he made me promise a long time ago to never tell anyone he was blind. No one, not even you two. It's something he likes to do himself after he's met in person. That way, they don't just come into his house thinking of him as... Well, handicapped. Disabled, Ma corrected him. Yes, I mean disabled. That's the one thing he hates the most. Dad slid over to the corner of his bed, close to Jeannie. Grandpa doesn't like for, you know, people to help. Jeannie drew his knees up. His legs were starting to go numb. And Dad noticed the red truck in his hand. Be careful with that, son, he said, holding out his hand for the truck. Wood made this, and it's the only thing left from his childhood Grandma has left. It means the world to her. Dad peered at the truck as if he could see Uncle Wood sitting in the driver's seat. It clearly meant something to him as well. Forgot Wood was a model guy, just like you. He shook his head. Crazy. But he gave the truck back to Jeannie, who couldn't help but think about what other things he and Uncle Wood might have had in common. But dad brought him back to the topic at hand. Anyway, about your grandfather. Ernie got a heck of a surprise, too, when he visited the first time. Dad looked to Ernie, who laid sprawled on the other bed, clicking away on his phone. I hope you guys are not clicking away on your phones right now while I'm reading to you. Put it down. You can text later. What you doing, Ernie? I'm trying to send this text, but it won't go through. Ernie stared at the screen in disgust. He had broken up with his girlfriend, Keisha, a few weeks before. Well, really, she broke up with him. Dumped him for a dude from Flatbush named Dante, but everyone called him Two Train. That was his rap name, 
And when Keisha told Ernie that Two Train wrote raps about her, Ernie started sending her a text every day. Crappy love poems, ridiculous attempts at rhyming that would put his whole cool thing at risk if anyone besides her, Jeannie, or his parents ever found out about them. Dad laughed. Text? Don't bother. No service out here, son. And no computer, Ma followed. Ernie finally looked up, an insane expression over his face. No service? No computer? This was bad news. Bad news. And not just for Ernie, but for Jeannie, too. How was he going to look up stuff now? He had added at least 16 new questions to his notebook since breakfast, mostly about being blind. Now what was he going to do? So you might as well put that thing down and let her go, Ma advised. She wasn't good enough for you anyway. Good luck with two trains, sweetheart. Ma swatted at the air, shooting the memory of Ernie's ex-girlfriend away. What kind of rap name is two train anyway? Dad reeled the conversation back in again. Not important. Ernie, tell your little brother about how it went down the first time you met Grandpa. He grinned. And this was way worse than yours, Jeannie. Ernie tossed his phone onto the bed, looking ticked. I don't even remember it. Y'all just say, this is what happened. Because it did happen. But I was four. I know, I know. Dad was clearly getting annoyed by all of Ernie's back talk. Forget it, I'll just tell him. See, Jeannie, Ernie was acting a fool, just like he is right now. Ernie sucked his teeth. So I told him if he could just stay quiet, play the quiet game, Ma clarified. Be a sloth, Jeannie tossed in the pot. Right, if he could just play the quiet game for 20 minutes, I would take him to McDonald's. French fry bribery. That was how their parents always used to make deals with them. So Ernie's on the floor, sloth silent, and I'm talking to your grandma. Grandpa was in the bathroom. Next thing I know, the old man came out to join us and he tripped over your brother. Grandpa fell right on his face, Ma added, putting stacks of journey, Jeannie and Ernie's clothes, an entire month's worth, in the drawers of the blue dresser. Ernie's in the middle drawer, Jeannie's in the bottom. The top drawer was reserved for random items, handheld pencil sharpeners, school glue, masking tape, abnormally small screwdrivers, things like that. I thought we killed him, she blurted, but nobody worried about me, Ernie added. Of course we did, Ernie, but you were okay. Nothing could damage that big head, Dad said with a laugh, and he threw up a threw a balled up pair of socks at him. Ernie chopped them away. You remember what grandpa said after he fell? Ernie sat up. Didn't he say something about me winning the McDonald's? Yeah, he said that you deserve a week's worth of McDonald's because you were so quiet that a blind man couldn't even hear you, dad finished. And that's how your grandfather told Ernie that he was blind, right there on the floor with a bloody lip. I know it's ridiculous, but that's how he likes to do it. It's just his way. Er Jeannie glanced at Ernie with his toughest face, the one where he tightened his eyes. And you didn't tell me? It's your grandpop's rules, dad reiterated. And trust me, I learned from a young age not to break my daddy's rules. So we, mean, we made Ernie promise to not tell you. Plus, we didn't want you to be all worried about staying here. Jeannie had to give it to his parents. They knew him well. He had worry issues. Does anybody else have worry issues? I know I do. And y'all still owe me some nuggets or fries for something for, or something for that, but I'll take 10 bucks instead, Ernie said now. Dad shot him a look and then noticed all the, this ain't cool on Jeannie's face. Because five minutes ago, Jeannie hadn't been worried about staying. But now, I promise you're okay here, Jeannie. You really think me and your mom would leave you here if we didn't think you were going to be fine? Dad palmed his knees. Plus, the old man ain't bad for being blind. He can do just about everything. He stood up and stretched his arms over his head, leaning to the left and then to the right, working the stiff out of his back. He, can, he can't drive a car, Jeannie said sharply, flipping the toy truck in his palm. 
Well, Dad paused as he, brought, as he brought his arms down and waved a finger at Jeannie. Careful with that. I'm serious. He can't drive a car, Jeannie repeated, setting the truck down gently on the floor. His father shoved his hands in his pockets. I guess you're right about that. He can't. Dad glanced at Ma, who just shrugged. So then he can't do everything. Jeannie had pro proven his point. When she finished unpacking their clothes, Ma told the boys to put the suitcase back in the car. Which really meant leave the grown folks to grown folks business. As soon as they got outside, Samantha, that's the dog, started bark barking like crazy. You probably would have figured it out from the barking, right? They both jumped a mile. Chill, Samantha, Ernie said, playing it off, trying to pretend like he didn't jump. Jeannie had seen him, but let it slide away. Ernie popped the trunk and threw the suitcase in with all the other junk that their father kept back there. Spare tire, jumper cables, tools, a blanket, dad's emergency kit that he never used because they never drove anywhere at home. Samantha kept on barking and jumping, the chain around her neck slapping dust into the air. She sounded like dad's Honda whenever the engine froze up in the winter. Ernie headed straight for the dog. Jeannie held back. There were tons of dog in their neighborhood back home. There had to be at least 10 on their block and they were not talking little cutesy wootsy yip yap dogs. They were talking big dogs. Dogs that walk up and down the street like bodybuilders. Thing was, Jeannie knew those dogs. He had grown up with them. But he and this dog, Samantha, were strangers. She was all black except for a patch of white on her face and on each paw, but she had a pink nose. When Jeannie had asked dad what kind of dog Samantha was, he just said she was a mutt. Grandma liked having her around so she'd know whenever someone was coming in the yard. As Ernie got closer, Samantha stopped barking and just panted, her tongue dangling from her mouth like taffy, spit flying everywhere. Come on, Jeannie. Ernie called, come on, Ernie called to Jeannie. Her tail's wagging. She don't want to hurt us, man. He slowly stretched out his arm until the back of his hand was in front of Samantha's face. Samantha nosed it, sniffed, and then settled down, leaving a wet streak across his knuckles. See, he said, scratching behind Samantha's ears. Just gotta let her smell you. Then she'll get comfortable. Bet she remembers me from last time I was here. From all the way back then? Jeannie wondered if a dog's memory could be that good. Now elephants, they'll remember all their family members. Maybe. Samantha rolled over onto her back and Ernie began rubbing her pink spotted belly. Yeah, but she ain't never met me before, Jeannie said. He took a step closer. The screen door creaked open and Ma and Dad came out, pausing to hug and kiss Grandma, who was promising that the boys would be fine. Not, not to worry and to really make the best of their time in Jamaica. Dad said they would. Ma didn't say anything and make sure to call as soon as they got back to Brooklyn. Boys, come give me my hugs, Ma said, heading towards them, arms out. Jeannie went first wrapping himself around her tightly as she rubbed the back of his head. Everything will be fine. You being here, me and your father, everything, okay? Jeannie nodded. He wanted to believe her because she was pretty much always right. But this time, he wasn't so sure. Then Ma called over Jeannie over. You come give me some too, chump, she said. I know you almost 14 and everything, but you ain't too old to hug your mother. Jeannie let go and Ernie came in for his hug. His wasn't as crazy as Jeannie's, but it was real. Ma hated fake hug or fake hugs or pat pats, she called them. That's when you just reach your arm around the person and squeeze them on the back, but you don't and pat them on the back, but you don't squeeze. Real hugs squeeze. Then Ma grabbed Ernie by the face and kissed him on his forehead. He twisted his mouth into a frown. She smiled anyway. Take care of your little brother, got me? Of course, Ernie said. 
Ma knew him so well. She could tell that he rolled his eyes even though he had on his shades. I'm serious, boy, she said with some bass in her voice. Dad came over with his hand out. He gave Jeannie five and then pulled him close. Then he grabbed Ernie. Y'all take care of each other. Remember, y'all are brothers. Understand? Yeah, Ernie said. You too, Dad said, looking at Jeannie. Got me? Got you. Dad explained that he and Ma would be calling to check in, even once they got to Jamaica. Then he told them that he loved them. Then Ma said that she did too. And then Grandma said that she loved everybody as Dad and Ma got in the car. A straight up love fest. Samantha barked and barked as the car, as the car, barked and barked as the car barked and barked until the engine finally turned over. Dad rolled the windows down and threw a hand up. Ma gazed at them, her eyes wet as the car pulled off. The Honda turned towards the hill, Samantha still barking, trying to chase it, but being snapped back by her chain. So Jeannie chased it for her. He ran behind the car for as long as he could until it hit the slope and began bumping down to the bottom. The hill was so steep that from where Jeannie was standing, it looked like his parents had just driven off of a cliff. He tipped to the edge and watched the brake lights blinking on and off until they disappeared. Um, what I want you to do right now is go to the Google Classroom. You're gonna find a link where I have all of the comprehension questions for As Brave As You. I want you to open up that link and type your answers to the questions in under each question. Capitalization matters, using tag matters, and punctuation matters. Remember, when we type, you do the word, period, space, next word. Tune in soon for your vocab lesson. See you guys in a little bit. Bye.